So Lightroom is, you know, there's Photoshop um, and then there's Lightroom. Mm -hmm. And so that first distinction is Photoshop is more for processing sort of like one photo at a time for mm -hmm. something that you want to do a ton of tweaking on and maybe even put in text and that sort of thing. Lightroom is for batch processing, sort of like iPhone or photos or Google photos are is just like to, to handle a lot of photos. Um, and it's, it's, it can do most of the things that Photoshop can. And that's why a lot of photographers use it because oftentimes it's not, they're not trying to like have every single photo be edited like to the nth degree. Right. They're trying to like, they're a wedding photographer or, you know, they're doing a product photography or something and they need to be able to apply effects across a lot of different photos simultaneously. And so Lightroom's really good. It's sort of like the next level of organization um, for your photos. And then it's supposed to create a lot of ease of use in terms of, um, you know, how quickly you can edit and export photos. Cool. Uh, the other thing that I would sort of iterate here is that um, it, it makes sense to be shooting in RAW on your, okay. your camera. Um, if you're interested, we're going to be probably doing, uh, we just got some new Panasonic S5 cameras. They're, oh, wow. they're nice. They're 24 megapixel cameras. They shoot really good video and they shoot really good photos. And most of the photos you're going to be seeing today are shot on that. Nice. When that class comes out, if you're interested in taking it, you can sign up and then you can, you know, take experiment taking photos with that camera. Cool. So, and, and then, you know, you can use this Lightroom software to touch it up. Sweet. Um, so I'm just checking on texts here. I'm still waiting. Yeah. No, um, but um, it's basically, like I said, it's meant, it's meant to batch process photos, um, but you can really get into the nitty gritty on how you touch up each photo. Uh, so I think I'm going to pull up my sort of itinerary here and we'll start. Awesome. You do need an Adobe account, which it sounds like you already have because you're, right. you're through the college. Right. Um, I think the first sort of stop that we go to is let's pretend I'm going to just, um, I can, I can open Lightroom, but it's just going to bring up this, this, um, this particular catalog. Um, Lightroom has what are called catalogs. And if I open, there's different, I can do like a new catalog or I can, um, I can open a recent one. Um, what, what I would generally say is it sort of depends on your workflow, what you want to do. Um, I have a home pictures catalog and then I have a professional work catalog nice. and it's sort of stuff that, you know, within it's sort of how much you want to lump and split. So within that you can, you can decide if you want to do entirely a new catalog, but there's lots of ways within Lightroom to, to organize. Um, so maybe you just want to put dump it all in one catalog and call it a day. Um, I'm going to pretend like I'm importing. Mm -hmm. um, I will import some stuff. So let me kind of, let me go back to develop module mm -hmm. here. Can I do a new one? Hold on. Let me make sure that I have. Um, yeah, yeah the right catalog open because I think, oh, I need to show all photographs. Okay, so um, this is the interface. I'm gonna pretend like I'm gonna import. I go to import here mm -hmm. and there's lots of different pl like places you can import from. You can import from an SD card. You can import from an external hard drive. Mm -hmm. It's really up to you how to do it. Um, and I'm gonna pretend like I'm going to import some sample photos. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's really nice, if you look in this right-hand corner, there's this option to don't import suspected duplicates. Nice. I've actually imported most of these photos, so I dumped in some new ones, and you can see that it, it checks the ones that I want. Um, now, some people, they try and sort of triage photos ahead of time because they want to like eliminate the ones so they don't even import them in the first place. I just, I'm kind of the other way. I just import everything at once. Cool. Um, and the reason why I do that is because a couple times when I've been trying to select which photos I want to import, I've had to like start the whole process all over again. Oh, it looks like Mate has joined us. So usually I import and then I delete. Hola, Mate. Es, um, no te oigo. 
Hola, ahora Muy sí. Muy bien. Disculpen. ¿Cómo está? Muy bien. Ya empezamos, pero uh, do you, uh, is it okay if I speak in English? Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. This is Michael. He's with Mount Hood Community College. This is Mate, good friend Hi, of ours. Mate. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to uh, meet you too. <laughs> so Mate, is Anibal coming or is he... Is he not? Yes, he's coming. Okay. In a few minutes, probably. <laughs> okay. Well, we're recording it too. So if you if you want it recorded, I'll send out the link. Sound good? Great. Thank you. And you guys use you guys use. Can you say why you're interested in using Lightroom, real quick? Uh, for for me, in my case. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're taking a lot of pictures, more outdoor pictures, mostly when we go out. Uh, and yes, we. We love to publish the pictures and everything, and we try to use Lightroom for half a perfect pictures. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. And yes, I really like it because the only the few things that I know uh, for me is easier than another programs. Uh, I really like it that part. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Muy bien. Um, okay, so I was just gonna show. Um, I'm gonna cancel out of this. Um, Mate, you probably know a lot about this importing and the and the catalog, so I'm going to just skip what I talked about, but I'll just pretend like I'm going to import. Um, you can import from an SD card or wherever you want to. And Mate, by the way, we're recording this. Is this okay if, if you don't mind being recorded for our channels and internet? Totally okay. Yeah. Nunca has, has, uh, has ido en frente de una cámara, ¿verdad? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, me da Mate, pena. Mate used to, she used to work for Digital Trends and she was like one of their product reviewers. So she's wow. used to being in front of the TV, in nice. front of the camera. Nice. Um, okay, so you can pick a hard drive um, and I'm going to pick um, my existing Macintosh hard drive. I have all these sample photos. And like I said, this is really nice that it does this don't import suspected duplicates. Um, I can add them to an, an existing collection that I already have. And then something that's really nice is you can actually apply, let's say like your, your camera like produces kind of greenish photos, or maybe it just like the raw photos need a little touching up. I usually, I don't have it in here, but I have like a special preset I call my secret sauce. I just like <laughs> bump up the vibrance, I, the saturation a little bit, and I dehaze it. Um, and you can apply one of those ahead of time and just import everything already touched up a little bit and that's your baseline. Um, and then, um, so you can apply one of those uh, user presets. And by the way, um, my son's in the background, you probably hear him, Sam is. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, so anyway. Um, and thank, then, you, thank you for doing this though. <laughs> um, Let's see here. The other thing is you can add metadata. So you can actually add your own sort of like copyright set if you want. Um, I'm not going to do that. And, and then you can add keywords. So if all of these relate to something, um, let's say we just recently took a trip to Smith Rock. Um, Tú lo conoces muy bien, Smith Rock, ¿verdad? Yeah. Um, so there, if we I can put Smith Rock as a tag and I can put um, family vacation, just whatever you think you can use to sort through things. And then later those tags are really useful for searching for stuff. And you can apply all of that on import. I'm gonna skip that. Um, let's see here, I'm gonna say import. Blah, blah. And then, um, let me see here. One of the things that I, I ran into when I was first using Lightroom is I didn't realize that you need to manage all of your photos inside of Lightroom. So I'll just, I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Um, I'm gonna drag this over here. Give me just a second here. Sure. Um, so I have right here, um, Go to pictures. So I've I've set up my folders ahead of time, but if if I were to move one of these out of here, um, it's sort of like so in Final Cut this happens or in other programs. If you move the media somewhere, then the program is going to be like I can't find this. So 
The way to avoid doing that is you don't use the Finder to move things. You use Adobe Lightroom to move things. So um, if you want, um, I have, if you want to create a new, like a new folder, it's right over here in this panel. We're in the library view. You just add, you can add a folder um, and that's where you want to create your folders. And that's how you want to move stuff around. You want to avoid doing it in the finder video window. You want to do everything from Lightroom. Otherwise it, it's, it forces you, you have to go and find that stuff, which is kind of a pain. Um, so I would just, you know, word to the wise, try to avoid that. <laughs> um, and then, so I'll give you an example. You know, I can move one of these photos. I can drag it and be like, I want this to be in my test folder. Then it's going to pop up this thing. It says it's moving a file on the disk and it's going to do it for me. I'm not going to do that right now, but I, but I can. And that's the way to go about doing it. Um, and then um, the other way of sort of organizing things, like you have your folders and you can sort of have, have, um, each folder sort of represents something, but then you have these different types of collections. I have one that's called Adobe Lightroom class. Um, and I'm actually missing, I'm gonna go to this collection, or I'm gonna go, right now I'm gonna click on all photographs. And let me see, I'm trying to see the ones. I'm gonna go down here and organize, sort by capture time. So let's see here. I think. added order there we go so i'm going to go down here and these were the last four that i added and i'm going to add those to this i already have a collection set up here that's just a adobe lightroom and then i'm going to have it in that collection you can also do these smart collections so there's all sorts of things like you can do like the past month and then it shows you everything for the past month um, it's sort of up to you how you want to organize i like to do a lot of this manually so i just like create a new collection under this little plus sign right here, create collection. That's cool. okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's sort of just sort of, it's up to you how you want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is when I've imported stuff, um, this is how I sort of cull things. So give me a second and I'm going to um, show you what I like to do in terms of uh, kind of getting things to where I want it here. Um, let's go back to grid. So there's different ways to um, flag different pictures or give them ratings and stuff. There's actually, you can see down here, I can adjust the ratings. So that's, that's one way to do things. Um, I'll set that to zero. Um, or what I usually do is I'll import a ton of stuff and then I just pick the ones that I think are the best. And I'm pretty brutal about it because raw fo photos are very big and I want to whittle it down so that it's just the best or, or most of the best. I'm not too crazy about it, but you know, I try and be careful about it. So when you select which photos you like, you can, um, you can press P, which is a pick. And you'll notice there's this little flag down here that picks that thing, or you can press X to reject it. Um, and that's how I sort, I'm going to go back to pick. And then, um, since I already did this, uh, I'm going to sort, sort by added order. Um, I'm going to, so you'll notice I still have these four pictures that I haven't flagged or anything like that. I can go into the bottom right hand corner. And, um, if I go here to flagged, it's only going to bring up the, the photos that I've flagged. So I've flagged one photo. Um, and that's how I get rid of stuff is basically I pick unflagged. Let's hold on, get rid of that. I just do unflagged folder, unflagged photos. And if I haven't flagged it, I delete it. Everything that I flag, I keep. And everything that I don't want, I don't, I don't even mess with it. And then I just delete it. And when I press delete here, I need to do it from the all photographs because if I just do it from the collection, it won't delete it in there. If I press delete here, there's this thing that says delete, remove from Lightroom just says, okay, well, I'm not gonna refer to this anymore. 
delete from disk actually deletes it permanently from your hard drive. So it's something to think about. I don't want to store all those photos. I have too many photos already, so I'm pretty brutal and I just delete the bad ones. Cool. Okay. Can you delete many photos in the same time? Yeah. So um, I can press Command A and I could delete all of these if I wanted to. Okay. Or I can, I'm going to, I'm going to, if I, if you press shit, you can um, press, um, you can press a uh, command and then pick the ones that you want to delete. But again, Mate, what I usually do is I just like, I flag the ones I want to keep. And then I run a filter for the ones that I don't want to keep for the unflagged ones. And I delete the unflagged ones. Okay. Does that make sense? That's totally. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then, of course, you can do like if you use the the number keys. So I'll just show you, for example, for example, on this one, you can you can color code things like set to red, set to yellow, set to blue, um, and and I'll just change the rating to zero. But uh, and I'll get rid of that blue. Oops. Um, if there's some way you like to organize stuff color coded or with stars, then go for it. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to do um but anyway that's sort of that's how i i usually do things i pick the ones that i want to keep and then everything else gets deleted and that will make your life a lot easier and then i kind of put it in the collection or the folder that it seems most appropriate cool. but one of these photos is like easily 36 megapixels and that starts to add up so hold on let me go back Did not mean to open quick time. Not open quick time. So that's sort of like that's that's organization right there for the most part. You know, how do I how do I organize my Lightroom so things are together? And give me just one second. I'm gonna I'm trying to screen mode. Secondary don't show. Okay. I have a secondary display that was open and eating up memory. So if you do want to use two screens, you can. You just go to window, um, screen mode, sorry, uh, secondary display and show. And then you can actually have two screens. You can have one for like your your grid view to look at this stuff. And then you can have one to just look at the photo, just like you would in an editing program. Nice. OK. Any questions so far? Have have you heard of anyone importing uh, from Apple Photos into Lightroom, Seth? Like, I have keywords and stuff set up right now, and I yeah. hate to lose them, but I could rebuild them, of course. But... I have, God, I think I, tr I, I might have tried to do something like that. Right there on. might be a program that does it. The thing is, is when you export out of Apple, it mm -hmm. might be able to export with metadata, and you might be able to import with metadata into Lightroom. I cool. seems like it's possible, but I just don't know. No, um, that's fair, man. Um, if you need to just get stuff into Lightroom, then you can just like go drill down to the Apple Photos like folder and just grab mm -hmm. them all. Um, right so it is possible. I actually migrated from Apple Photos to Lightroom, and now I'm sort of in the Google Photo sphere for the most part. But for more professional <laughs> stuff, I use Lightroom. Cool. Thank you. Uh, um, so the two big develop the two big modules so if you look at the top here there's library and develop i don't use this map stuff i don't use book i don't use slideshow print or web any of that stuff i just don't use it um and the other thing i want to make a clear distinction there's adobe lightroom classic which is based off your laptop and then there's adobe lightroom creative cloud so those are two different worlds I recommend if you're doing a lot, if you're using a ton of photos or space, stick with Lightroom Classic because um, you, you know most most of the features are the same across uh, across from each other. But I think Lightroom has a Classic has a little bit of an edge, and also it allows you to like edit off a hard drive. If you go to Creative Cloud, then you're expected to have everything up in the cloud. And some people, I mean, I easily probably have like 500 gigabytes worth of photos and then you end up paying for that space <laughs> so that's why we're using classic cool 
Um, let's see here. So the two modes, there's library. Um, and if I want to switch between develop and library, I press D and that br brings me to the develop module. If I want to switch back to the library, if I press G for think about grid, that brings me back to the library module and shows me this grid. Um, the big difference is the library is more for organizing stuff. And then the develop module is like, I want to start color correcting and messing with things. You can do a little bit of that over here um, in this quick develop thing. And you can dink with keywords and that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I, you, you can do that, but we're going to jump into develop and actually start kind of like touching stuff up. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to show, give you kind of a tour around the, the interface here. Cool. So um, one of the things you'll notice, there's these little triangles in the corner right here on the right, and then up here on the top. If you want to hide these bars, this is a big gotcha. I've accidentally done this before, and I couldn't <laughs> find the toolbars, and it's super irritating. I'm like, where are they? They're probably here. <laughs> You can hover over and it'll show up. I just like to have them visible. So I'm going to click them out. So just be careful of that. I remember just, I don't like those kind of things happening. I was super irritated. <laughs> um, and then while you're in there, there's this little toolbar down here that gives you all sorts of useful tools. Like for instance, um, I'm going to go to something that I've already kind of touched up. Um, this is Andy, you know, Andy Mate. Um, I'm going to press Y. If I press Y, it shows me a before and after shot. That's actually this before and after view. But there's also, you can see like this before and after. There's a lot of different ways that you can see it. This is a really good way to kind of to check your work. Now, I can, I can turn that off. Um, let's see here. If I press Y again, it turns it off. Another good way to see like before and after, if you press the backslash key, that toggles bef uh, between before and after. And that's a really good shortcut. Um, the backslash key right above the return on your keyboard is, is really good because then I can just like, it's like night and day and be like, oh, that's cool. Nice. So I really like that key. Nice. Um, and then you definitely are gonna want um, there's a zoom option on here. Give me a second here. Let's go to library. Um, you have all these different options down here. You can see the flagging and the rating, but you definitely want zoom in there too. Because that allows me to zoom in and out. There's a lot of different ways to zoom. Um, you can double click on something. Oops. Let's just, uh, let's zoom on Mate. You can move around this left-hand corner, the navigator, you can, you can move around within here. And there's all sorts of ways that you can adjust the ratios, um, or I can just go to fit. You can move around and to different parts of the, the picture. Okay. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna jump over to really quick talk about presets. So if you go to develop and I'm gonna zoom back out here. Um, earlier I talked about having my secret sauce. Um, <laughs> there's, if you look on this left panel, there's all sorts of like pre-made presets that I can just go through and be like, oh, that's cool. And then you can just be like, okay, I'm done <laughs> and apply the preset. <laughs> Or you can make your own that's specific to your camera. And that's sort of this user presets area. In order to create your own preset, what you do, so let's pretend I've been editing this um, picture of my friend Andy. And I go to um, presets and I go to this little plus create preset. And it will take whatever sort of stuff that you have applied to that photo. And you can see all the different things that you can include. Um, I usually don't include like cropping or um, there's some other things like transform. 
there's certain things that just make no sense to apply because it's specific to that photo. Right. Um, so the user presets, you can create your own presets. I like to have a secret sauce one, but then let's say like you're a wedding photographer and you love to apply sort of like a soft look to everything, then, then you could have that wedding preset ready to go. Mm -hmm. And there, they actually, there's all sorts of plugins and you can buy that kind of thing too. So you can buy a plugin that has that sort of preset. Anyway, if you're interested in presets, these are the things that you can pre-apply upon import or you can just do it while you're in Lightroom. Nice. Um, let's really quick, um, one last little bit when I was talking about plugins, you'll notice um, Mate is holding this thing right here. This is called an X-Rite color checker. These are basically, there's a, a plugin that you can get um, that you can you can click on like a square in this and it just sort of like magically says like be all the correct colors <laughs> this is really important for like fashion photography and that sort of thing when um, you want it to be color accurate mm -hmm. when i did i do know that when i use this preset when i use this color checker when i was doing the photo shoot with mate it it worked really well. It just like was immediately nice, bright, perfect colors. And I had to do very little adjusting afterwards. And that's what it all comes down to is like quick, quick color adjustments and sort of like getting through pictures quickly. So hmm. something to think about. Uh, they're like, I want to say this is about a hundred bucks. You can get them. They're called the passport color checker. But how do you use, oh, sorry, you said no, no. Yeah. No, no. How do you use that colors? Is like when you do the balance of the camera? No, well, so first, Mate, you make sure that you have the right white balance set on the camera, uh -huh. all that stuff. But actually, what you do is in Lightroom, I'm sorry I don't have the plugin to show you, but in Lightroom, it asks you to pick a square. Like it says, like, pick, pick like, I can't remember. It's like pick the, the white square, pick the like red square. And then and then it just says, OK, this is this should look this color. I know it's exactly this color because that's like what these things are all about. Wow. Yeah. And Mate, if you guys ever want, you're welcome to borrow one if you want to tinker <laughs> with it, because I'm not using it right now. Um, but yeah, good to know. I didn't know how that worked. <laughs> yeah, basically, you it's like you hold it up and then in post, when you edit it in Lightroom, you just say, okay, I have this color checker, this color, I click on this and, and then everything is the correct color. Nice. And this gets back to why we shoot in RAW. If you shoot JPEGs, you're not getting, basically RAW is how the camera sees things. And, the, and that's why we can adjust so much stuff. A JPEG looks really good. It's meant to make everything look good, but it's really compressed and it's really hard to, it's not really hard, but it's more difficult to make it, um, to adjust things because it adds noise and adds problems afterwards. And that's why we shoot in raw. Hmm. So that's what I recommend is if, if you're serious, you know, I don't shoot in raw on my phone. You can, um, if, but if they're like serious pictures that you want to like take, put some time into like you know for your business then i would shoot in raw because then you have all all you got to do is just apply a filter if you don't want to dink with it but then you have all of the data and um it allows you to do a lot more and, I, and i'll talk about that in a second here seth if i can ask one i've been really curious about those passports and uh i'm assuming that like right now in the picture you're kind of outside full sun mm -hmm. or something, but then you would redo it as you change lighting and stuff. Is that? Yeah, that's you... exactly right. So cool. it depends on basically whatever the, you know, if you go to a new scene or new mm -hmm. circumstance, you should use that because the light's going to fall on it differently. That's exactly right. right. Thank you. That's unexpectedly cool what you brought up here. So <laughs> yeah, and I remember doing it. It, it was like, uh -huh. whoa, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. So and I know fashion, you know, when I read up on these like fashion photographers, they it has to be color accurate. You know, it's right. like whatever their name of their like, this is plum fuchsia. Well, <laughs> it needs to be the correct color when it shows out up in print. So yeah, people absolutely. see what it the correct color. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. 
Oh, that's cool. Um, okay, so I talked a little bit about presets. Um, one extra thing, you know, we, we I'm, I swear I'm going to get into actually correcting some of this stuff, but, but <laughs> again, what makes Lightroom so nice is that you're able to apply attributes across a lot of things quickly. So let me give you an example. Um, let's see here. So where do I have several pictures in a row? I have a bunch of pictures of my brother doing um, construction work. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this picture. I'm going to hold down on command. And I'm going to pick this picture and this picture right here. Actually, first, what I'll do is I'll do a quick color correction on this. So here's like an easy, quick lesson. Um, if you want to, I'll go to basic right here. Um, if you want to um, just not have to dink around a lot, you actually have an option. Um, let's see here. Where is it? Sorry, give me a second here. No, if you want to change the colors on things, you want to go to tone. Um, you can do it in library. You can just say like tone control auto. Mm -hmm. And then it just sort of says, okay, I'm going to do the best job that I can. Cool. Um, I'm going to undo what I just did. Okay. And I'm going to unselect those because I want to. Uh, so, so I'm going to pick that one. I did auto. And then I'm going to select those other two. I can press command. And watch what happens. I'm going to press, um, I'll get rid of this auto sync. I'll just press sync. And you can see that these two, oops, let's say, oh, I'm in, I want to do, I'll get rid of that. If I press sync, it's going to pop up this picture and it's going to say, what do you want me to synchronize? Because what you're doing is you're making those pictures that were shot in similar circumstances look like what you touched up so you don't have to do each one individually you just add that to the other one so mate if you guys have some you're shooting a model or something like that and they're all in the same light it doesn't make sense to do each one individually so you select those and you press the sync option and then i would do most of the stuff that it tells you to do but then there's a couple like local adjustments i'm going to show you what that means i, I wouldn't do that i wouldn't do crop um, I wouldn't do spot removal or transform because those things are specific to that one photo. And if I do like a crop, I might crop like part of the photo I don't want on the other ones. Or if I do something like a spot removal, like let's say somebody, I don't know, like has a something on their face, you know, they have egg on their face or whatever, <laughs> and I remove that. Well, that spot removal is going to show up in every other photo in exactly the same place. And it won't make sense to have done that. So I hit this synchronize and, and those ones, you'll see them down there in the bottom right hand corner. Suddenly they're like, they're more brilliant and colorful because they've had the same stuff applied to them. Um, cool. On that same note, let's say I, I can still select all three of these. One last tiny sort of extra bit to that. Mm -hmm. um, if I touch up this photo and I turn this on to, I click this little toggle button. If I turn it on to auto sync and I still have those selected, everything I do will just automatically sync with those photos. So it's sort of up to you. If you wanna keep tinkering with this and just have those adjust as you go, you can, or you can make all the edits, make it like as nice as you want it to be. And then, then just press sync and just do those and do one and done. It's up to you. Very cool. So I'll get rid of, We'll get out of there. OK, we're going to jump into sort of the meat and potatoes of this. Okay. So I'm going to go to, um, I'm trying to think of where to start here. I'll go to this develop. I'm going to just pick this. This is a tiny home that my brother was working on. Um, nice. And we're going to look at, um, we're still in develop. And then we're going to look at the panel here on the side. I'm going to. I'm going to close that up. You can just close it like that. Or you can double click on that to open it. Um, if you want to adjust the order of these, you can say right click and say custom develop 
you can either like show everything and then um, everything will just be open. Oops, no, I got that wrong. I'm gonna get rid of solo mode. Solo mode, what that does is it makes, so you'll notice like all of these, I could just have them open, but then I have to scroll through all of them. Um, I would recommend solo mode. So I'm gonna right click and say solo mode so that only one of them is open at a time. You can have them all open, it's up to you. Um, and then you can say this custom develop, you can move the ones that you use most often towards the top. So basic is something I use all the time. Um, and then um, I would probably do like detail and lens corrections um, and then effects because I like effects includes vignettes, which I like to use. So, so we're gonna kind of tinker a little bit with this. I'm gonna start by cropping. Right here is the crop tool. If I press R, that gives me my crop tool. And um, you can change the ratio here. So you can have like the original ratio or you can have a locked off ratio. Um, if, I, if I just go with, um, if I go with original, it'll do its thing. But if I go to custom, that means I can change this kind of any way I want to. I can go, okay, sorry, that's locked off at 16 minutes. Let's go to custom. So if you want a specific ratio, no, I don't want that. If you want it to be just this half of the screen, you can. But I'm gonna just go to original. It's originally how it was shot. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of just crop this down the way I want it. And that's sort of my first edit most of the time. And then you hit enter and you've cropped. Um, if, if for some reason this isn't level, um, I can press R again and see this little in the, I'm going to zoom in here. Can you see that little double headed arrow that's at an angle? Mm -hmm. That's how I rotate. So I can actually rotate. I'll do un, undo here. I'm going to zoom out. But you'll notice that when I rotate, this grid appears. Um, so that's an option on your toolbar. You can have the grid up here and that's actually really useful because it helps you find the horizon correctly on a lot of things. So then I'll just line this up with that grid. I'm gonna hit enter again and then I've cropped it. Um, one thing, I'm gonna show you an example that um, I had trouble with. So this is my sister had a, a perfume kind of distillery business. And one of the things that I found was when I tried to crop it, I pressed this R button. You'll notice that I can't do a perfect square out of it. The reason being, um, when I shot this photo, the camera wasn't perfectly overhead. Mm -hmm. It was at an angle. So there's no way I'm going to make this shot perfectly square. Except there is one little option if you go down to um, transform. Uh, I'm going to go to, I'm going to undo this crop. I'll escape out of the crop. Um, if I go to transform, I'm, I'm not going to dink with these because I'm lazy. I'm just going to say auto and you'll see this picture. Watch what happens when I press auto. Suddenly <laughs> it looks square. Whoa. So if you have something that has really specific lines, I mean, and it's still not perfect, huh. but I was able to crop it so that it came pretty damn close. Yeah. Now I'm able to like get really close to what I need. And this like does a pretty good job of it. Nice. And I'm just kind of like, boop, boop, boop. and if I press that, mm -hmm. it's fairly convincing. So, so that's where you, this transform is like sort of, how you can distort the picture if you want it to look weird, or you can undistort it if you want it to look correct, if that makes sense. Totally. Okay, nice. I'm gonna undo all that. Command Z is your undo. Mm -hmm. By the way, on this left side, there's this option. You can do the history of all the stuff that you've done. So if you like do a bunch of stuff, you're like, ah, oh, man, I don't wanna press command to hold, undo a lot. Then you can like um, you can either create a snapshot, so it's sort of like you can always go back to that, yeah. or you can say like I'm going to clear history above this step. Actually, I'll do one more. 
um, clear history above this step. And then it just kind of brings it back to how it was. Nice. So it's sort of up to you. So the crop tool, you know, that's sort of my first move is I need to crop it so it looks correct. Mm -hmm. And then um, the next thing I'm going to do, let me look on my list here. Um, I'm going to go into the basic menu. So let me, actually, I'm going to cheat just one more time because I want to show you how, how well auto works sometimes it really nails it some sometimes it doesn't sometimes like yeah, i don't like that but let me see if i got that picture give me a second i'm going to go into grid mode and edit and close that. Fudge down there. i think i had one picture that i didn't export oh here it is this is it never mind Okay, I'm going to double click on this and I press D for develop. So this is my son, Sam, and this is my wife, Amy, and we're, um, we're just at Smith Rock. And then you can see it's really dark. Uh, this is really hard for cameras, um, having a really bright sort of split between dark and bright. It's called dynamic range. Our eyes can see that really well, but cameras can't always do that perfectly. That's why we shoot in raw, though, because it helps. Uh, give us be able to stretch that range. So watch what happens when I just press auto. I'll go back here and I'll go to auto. And it does a pretty good job. Like the background looks a lot better. It's a little yes. bit darker here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just, I'm going to say thanks for all the changes. I appreciate it. I'm going to go to basic here, which is like the big thing that you're going to use the most. And what I usually see is these dark sort of Darker areas are the shadows. So I'm going to bring those shadows up. And what's nice about Lightroom is you'll notice that not much of the background changes. It's just the dark parts. So it's sort of, it's really good at isolating things. So then I have a pretty decent photo now. So um, I have, you know, my nice kind of blue sky in the background. Mm -hmm. And I've brought up the dark kind of colors right here. And I didn't have to do very much work to achieve that. So that's where auto, I think, is really nice. It just sort of like, sometimes it, it really hits it. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to press backslash on this, and you'll see before and after. So one way to do it is you can hit this compare thing right here. That's Y. Um, if I press Y, then you can, we'll, we'll change to, um, we'll do left and right. Oh, you know what? I think it might have had a, it imported some stuff in the first place. So give me a second here. Sure. There we go. There you go. So um, you'll see that, you know, we, th this is sort of like actually before is a little bit better. I think I adjusted this previously, and that's why I sort of like this. Anyway, okay. this was with an auto setting, and it just like, magically made everything better. So something to think about. And then you can just kind of fine tune things afterwards. Are there any questions? Do you guys want to stop for questions before? I, I'm going to keep digging into what how this basic panel works. Seth, in your workflow, do you usually try the basic option first to see and then like fine tune it? Or do you just go as a, I consider you to be an expert, man. So do you usually just go right into it and start adjusting the other parts or? Um, I usually, so, you know, I usually, I don't always use auto. Okay. Sometimes when I'm feeling lazy and I'm just like, oh, I hope this turns out good. Auto is <laughs> yeah. a good option. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but then there's other times where I want to fine tune it. You know, one of the things with auto is you'll notice that all of these these values just got kind of shifted around a lot. Totally. Now that's okay because raw photos allow you to do that kind of shifting without adding a lot of noise and problems. Um, but it's just, you know, I don't always want to just hit auto because then that means I need to go through those and tinker with them maybe. So it just kind of depends on the situation. Um, so, you know, but... A lot of times, you know, let me see if there's some other. I'm going to go to. Um, there's ones that is just obvious immediately. So I'll do this one of Mate. 
So Monte is pretty well lit here. It's a fairly dark background. I can tell that like some of the blacks here are pretty, pretty dark. So what I might do is I might just pull up the shadows just a skosh mm -hmm. because I want it to like, I'm, I immediately look at this and say it's too dark. Mm -hmm. Now I know that it's properly exposed on her face and all that, but the background needs some love. But then there might be something, um, let me see if I can find one that looks like it's a little underexposed. So I could take this. This is difficult because I have contrast between the sky and the background. But one thing I could immediately say is like, all of this is too dark. I'm gonna over, I'm gonna just bump up the exposure. Yeah. The exposure is a global change. It just makes everything brighter or less bright. But then when I do these individual things, like um, I don't use contrast very much. It, it does what it says, which is it sort of makes stark starkness between the brights and the and the darks mm -hmm. um, but generally i'm in the highlights and the shadows a lot hmm. um, now something else that i like to use i'll jump back we're back at this trailer right i had a lens on that the lens filter was i couldn't it was a uv filter and i couldn't get it off it was like my dad's old lens and it was just like cemented on my brother under actually ended up taking it off and I really appreciated it. Um, but um, this is very hazy and foggy looking. So one of the things that I like to use just in general, and this is one of the secret sauce things I use is this dehaze. Hmm. If you'll notice, I start to use that dehaze and it looks, it immediately just kind of looks less foggy. Most photos in raw, like they kind of have this like almost like, just blah kind of haze over them. It's, called, it's kind of flat looking. And so if I take away some of that haze, it's, it's helpful. Cool. Um, so let's see here. So the other thing is, you know, I'm looking at this. It's hard on this one because, it, you know, there's that haze, which at, when I dehaze, it kind of like makes it a little darker. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to see if I can pump up the shadows just a skosh. So I bump up the shadows so you can see some of the wood. And then the other thing is I might adjust the saturation and make it more saturated. Hmm. Um, the other thing you can do, uh, let me see if I can find one that's a good example of this. Uh, so vibrance, um, let me see if I can find, I think I was doing it on this one. Here, I'm gonna, I'm going to reset this, kind of bring it back to where it was. I'll just bring up the shadows a little bit to mess with it. So I'm gonna go to vibrance, and vibrance. What it does is it takes some of the more muted tones in a in a shot, and so like there's light blue in that shot. Um, it's, it's more selective. So it kind of goes for the things that are more muted tones. Saturation is like everything. And, and vibrance is sort of specific to the things that are already a little more muted. Cool. Okay. And that in general, you know, you have your white balance too. So like this, I can tell that the white balance was on auto. And so it's at 5,100. That's close to outdoor temperature light. It was probably right. But let's say, you know, it's, I want to warm it up just a skosh. I can just like push that up a little bit and increase my temperature. And this to me looks better than um, I'll take, I'll, I'll turn it, I can toggle that off. Um, where are you? Sorry, I'm missing the little toggle for it. No, it's okay. I guess I can't do that right now. Um, I'll do the before and after, but if I subtract that, you'll notice it's a lot bluer wow. in that previous yeah. shot. Yeah. So um, I warmed it up a little bit, at, but at the cost of now, the clouds are a little bit blue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a little bit less blue. Um, so it's kind of up to you. Again, you, you have decisions to make, but there's ways to work around that too. Mm -hmm. So, and then tint is just kind of, um, you know, what color a hue is. So I can, this, it kind of leans pink when I add this or it leans green when I add it this way. Um, again, 
it's sort of what what do you think is appropriate one thing though for these let's say i want to reset these i can always just press reset here but maybe i just want to adjust one thing like i don't want tint to be there if i double click on that on that text it just brings it back to what it already had and it sort of does some auto adjustments you'll notice there's this plus 14 it does some auto adjustments when it imports which you can you know get rid of by adjusting but mm -hmm. Okay, kind of going down through the different tools here. All right, um, I wanna pause here and see if there's anything. Um, So I'm going to skip to, um, I'm going to go to something. Um, let's see if I can find one that's helpful. Cool. I think this is a good example. So there's this HSL slash color mm -hmm. drop down here. I'm going to use that. Um, wow. I'm going to just go, it, it stands for hue, saturation, mm -hmm. and luminance. Um, and I, what I can basically do with this is like it divides things into the, the colors here, right? So I kind of feel like the greens in this are pretty muted. So one of the things I could do is I could actually kind of pull up the greens and you'll notice that when I do that, hmm. that the greens should kind of like pop up a little bit. So I'm gonna undo that. What am I doing there? Hold on. It's having trouble right now keeping up. It's not actually doing. Let's do all. I don't think it's doing what I'm telling it to do right now. I'm not seeing the change that I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It should, anyway, if you want to isolate colors, this is a good way to do it, is in this HSL. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good way to, let's try this. There we go. There you okay. can see it. Definitely. Yeah. So see how so see how her jacket like when I adjust this red just like goes from kind of blazing to darker, darker. Mm -hmm. And let's try green here. See now it doesn't want to, it doesn't seem like it's adjusting it. Anyway, if you're trying to isolate color, this is the way to do it. Um, so if you have like some really orange leaves you want to highlight, you can actually jump in here and be like, all right, I'll grab the orange and pump it up or pull it down. Um, it's, a, it's a good way to highlight those specific colors globally across the picture. Nice. Um, bah, bah, bah. Let's see, what are we doing for time? 7.30. Do we have any questions? Do you guys need a break or something? Um. No, I think we have, I'm perfect now. I don't have any questions. Okay. <laughs> Seth, is a preset the same as a LUT, L-U-T? I've been reading about LUTs for photography. And, uh... It's it's very similar. I think okay. it's probably the same thing. A LUT is just like, it's called the lookup table, and it's just okay. like a bunch of like color and luminance inputs. I think they're the same thing. A LUT, in, a LUT is what they call it in film. Um, but ah, I, okay. I can't be 100% certain, but it sounds like they're basically like the same, so... Cool. Thank you. Um, I'm going to jump out of here. I'll just reset this. Um, doo -doo -doo. So there's another thing. Um, let's see here. Let's go to. I'm not going to do a lot with this. I don't use it a ton. Um, but um, detail, for instance, mm -hmm. this is where you would do some noise reduction. So noise usually occurs when things are underexposed. So if I go in here, you have to get pretty close to even see noise. Um, I'll press Command Plus. You can see a little, I mean, a little bit of grain in here, but I don't have it pumped. I don't have my ISO up high, but you'll notice if I adjust this a little bit, see how that kind of softens things. 
So if you have a really noisy picture, like it was, it's really high ISO, this is a way you can tinker with these and kind of make that smooth things out. Okay. Yep. Um, so that would be for all the picture or it would be just for the parts of the pictures that I have? It, it's the whole picture, but okay. the most of the time, you know, it, it depends if it's if a, a picture that's totally just shot in the dark, then it's going to be the whole picture that has noise anyway. The, you know, the problem with noise, noise reduction a little bit is it can, it can screw up some other things, but it's one of those things like, you know, you kind of have to pick one or pick one or the other and how is that impacting your photo. But anyway, if you need to reduce some of the noise, let's say you have a photo that was shot kind of underexposed um, or, or didn't have enough light and you had to bump up the ISO a lot, that's a place that you could do it. Um, I'm going to go to lens corrections. And I have a, a specific, there's two options. There's remote, remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Um, but what I've read and heard is that both of these, you should just have them on. Like yeah. it's not going to hurt anything and you just set them to auto and it'll remove stuff. But let me kind of explain what chromatic aberration is. Um, I have a specific photo. I'm going to press G and go back to grid. Here we are. So this is a bad photo. It's not in focus, the background's in focus, but it, it iterates a point. So look at right here, do you see like this kind of red glow, purplish glow along the, this is my friend Oli. Um, you can see that on his shoulder, right? So that is what's called chromatic aberration. When you take a photo of something, light comes in and it doesn't always come in correctly through the lens, lens and it can create sort of a purple or green tinge around things. There's a couple ways to deal with that. One is you apply these lens corrections, remove, you know, uh, do those things. Um, you don't really see a lot of change here because I this is like a lens that's, this is not in the library for Adobe. It's my dad's old lens from the 1980s and it's not gonna detect it. So you can actually go in there manually um, and I'm going to do this defringe. I'm going to say, like, do a bunch of that. Hmm. And I'm going to get rid of some of that. I'll just do it fully here. And then I can adjust this. Hmm. Notice how I got rid of that purple hue. So you don't see that as much. But then it's kind of like he's lost some color here. So then you need to sort of adjust things back until you get that color back but just enough so that you haven't lost that, that fringe. It's kind of like a balance. So I'm gonna undo that. We'll go back to profile. Cool. Um, but let me, let's just see a different, let's do a different photo. I'll go here and we'll get out and look. Okay, so you're not, there, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of chromatic aberration here, but um, I can click that, but if I click on this enable profile, notice how it sort of like it pops in and out a little bit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do a ton. Again, it's not, it doesn't impact a lot. That's why I just leave it on and it shouldn't be a problem. Cool. It sort of just like corrects it. It's sort of like when you have a fisheye lens and you pop in and it makes it more flat, it's less curved. Like this is the same thing. It's just kind of like, pushing it out, like folding down a sheet so that it's correct. Nice. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's go to something that deserves a vignette. <laughs> do, do, do. I like to do, like this, this is probably a good one for a vignette. Um, a vignette is just like an old timey effect that happened on older film cameras and now it's cool to do it. Um, it also helps highlight your subject. So if I go to um, effects um, and I go to, po it's called post crop, crop vignetting. It's set to highlight priority and I can just pull on this and it allows me to sort of like make the corners a little bit darker and then you kind of see your stuff 
you can change the feather so it's not as strong. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can adjust um, the roundness of it. Um, you can adjust the midpoint. So um, it's kind of up to you how you want to how you want to do that. But um, I like to use vignettes. I don't do it on every single picture, but there's some things that are worth it. Um, it just kind of depends on on what you want to use it for. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. We're going to go back up here. I skipped some stuff. I wanted to show you guys this stuff um, because... Um, these are these are what I would say are global changes that go across the photos, and I wanted you because all this stuff is gonna we're gonna especially this basic panel is gonna come into play in this next segment because we're gonna start doing some local adjustments. Cool. Um, so one last thing I, I forgot about this. I did want to talk about the range of raw. So on Mate's hand here, you can see it's really overexposed. There are limits. So if I try and pull that down, I pull the highlights down as much as I can. I still don't lose that. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind, you know, you may not be able to get rid of all of the highlights in RAW. You do shoot in RAW because most of the time you can, but you always want to shoot it like exposed properly as best as you can. Um, so just think about that. Um, so I'm going to show you some of these and then I'll move to one last little bit as I want to show you how to merge photos using a technique called bracketing. But cool. I'll show you these these um, local adjustments. And I'm trying to think I had I think I had an example. Oh, OK, this is the one. <laughs> All right. So this is my friend Andy. Um, let's pretend I'll go here. You can, you see here, there's, he, ha, he's wearing a North face shirt. I'll just reset this so that it's what it should be. He's wearing a North face shirt and I don't like that little spot there. So one of the things that I can use, this is called the clone tool or the, um, spot removal tool. You can clone or heal clone is like basically just grab a patch from here and put it there. Heal is a little bit smoother. It's automatically set to heal. So if I zoom in, um, I press Command Plus to zoom in. And you'll notice that I've actually pulled up the tool already. If I try and drag right now, it, it, it's not going to do what I want it to do. It's going to start using the tool. And I'm like, well, how do, I, how do I drag this photo? In order to drag the photo, you can press Space Bar. And that'll bring back the little Mickey Mouse clown hand. Um, and then I can, let's, I'm going to just say done. I'm going to zoom. I'll just zoom in on the part. So anyway, if you need to like, I'm going to go back to this. If you need to drag the photo around while you're zoomed in and you're using one of these tools, you can either use space bar to do it, hold space bar simultaneously, or you can go in this top left-hand corner and grab this little, um, the navigator and use that zoom window too. So anyway, he has the North Face right there. I don't want that there. So I'm going to use the Heal tool. I can adjust the size of it right here. Or if you're on a Mac, you can just scroll up and down on the touch uh, or on the touchpad or on your mouse if you have a Magic Mouse. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just kind of like, you can just do one big blop or you can scroll around it. You might see there's kind of two rings. There's an inner ring, and that's going to be the size of it. And then the feather is sort of like where it gently eases off. So it's not like a perfect punched out circle. Um, and the opacity is like, I want this to be fully opaque because I need it to cover up this thing. You don't know, some, in some circumstances, you might not want to fully get rid of that. So anyway, I'm going to just do this. It grabs one point from another and I can actually source it to different parts. I just grab this little node, but I'm gonna, it usually does a good job. And then I say, enter, and then it's there. If I need to go back to that point, I can click on that again and I can mess with it. 
Um, and cool. I've used this, it's kind of tricky sometimes because you don't always have the right materials to fill in. I'll give you an example. Um, And oops, and then do that. Double click on the tool to exit it. Go to G and see if I can find. Oh, you know what? I'm not sure I had it in there. But I'll, this this will you this will work. You know, I could erase I could erase um, Amy and Sam from this picture if I wanted to. I could just <laughs> go to develop and clone tool or the, um, the spot removal tool. And I could just kind of like be like, okay, I'm gonna scrub that out. <laughs> and it doesn't always pick the right thing. So, and then I grab that, blah, blah, blah. It starts to look bad. The other thing you have to keep in mind is there's all sorts of things you don't think about, like the shadow that gets cast. You have to find the right stuff to put, to put in there so it looks correct. So it can be pretty tedious. You might have to do multiple rounds of this, which is something I've had to do in the past. I had a shot, I had a shoot once where the flash that I used was in was reflected in the window. And I had to like grab a bunch of stuff from the background and plop it in there. So anyway. Very um, so that's the clone tool. Red eye removal tool, I'm gonna skip it. It does what it says, re removes red eye. Um, and then there's this filter tool. So um, any any tool, if you just hover over it, it'll tell you what it is and it'll give you the shortcut for it. Um, but I'm gonna use that graduated filter tool. Uh, there's something called the graduated ND filter, which is basically, um, here, I'll, let me see if I can pull up a picture of it. So what a graduated ND filter does is half of it's sort of dark. It sort of gradually becomes less dark as it goes down. Like you can look right here. See how the bottom is sort of lighter and the top is darker. This is like specifically when you're shooting a horizon shot. This is really common. You have a shot where the sky is really bright and the ground is really dark. <laughs> and what a graduated ND when you put it on a camera does is it makes it so the sky's less bright and it keep and you can expose you can continue to expose the ground appropriately. Um, but I don't I didn't have one of those here. So I'm actually going to use this tool. If I click here and I just kind of start to pull it out. I have some adjustments in here. I'm going to um, I'm going to reset everything. We're going to do everything just back to normal. So I'm going to pull, I'm going to do this for exposure because I want the background to be a little less exposed. And you can see if I, if I expand this ND, you know, what I want is for that, that sky to be a little less exposed. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I just did. Now, the next thing I want to do is I have this really dark landscape. What do you guys think I should pull on to pull up that landscape to make it brighter? Here, and I'm going to click out of here. Mm -hmm. Our options are in the um, basic panel. Um, exposure or highlights? It's pretty shadowy, that yeah. landscape. The the blacks, you, you the, the blacks, yeah, the blacks or the shadows. Okay. So I'll pull up the shadows. And then that sort of pulls up my landscape so that it's, it's less dark. The okay. other thing is it's really bland looking. So I'm just going to immediately say, I'm going to add some saturation to that. Hmm. And then if I do before and after, you already start to see wow. like, oh, that looks a hell of a lot better. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm getting back to this tool. Here's my filter. Here's this little note it created. 
that's what my filter did for me was it it sort of allowed me to have to bring down the sky and you can't you could do it in two different ways you could just bring down the highlights but a filter probably does it a little smoother you can use it for other stuff too um, but this is the general use application that most people do nice um, I forgot. I was I was going to give a quick example about detail. Mm -hmm. um, so here's this picture. Here's Mate. I'm going to immediately um, I'm going to get rid of the the filter tool. I'm going to pull up the shadows. It immediately looks better, right? Because those shadows get pulled up. Um, I'm going to look at that Mount Hood in the background. It really doesn't stand out because it was out of focus and there's haze in the background. Um, so one thing I can do. Um, we can use this tool. This is called the, um, this is the adjustment brush. And this is really handy. I can use it to paint on attributes to one specific part of a, of a photo. So what I want to do is I'm going to, I'll start from zero on this. But this right here, what I would probably do is I want to um, dehaze a little bit. So I'm going to pull this up and then I can start brushing that on here. I'm dehazing. It kind of makes it a little look a little orange. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it does that, but that's what it did. And then I can sort of adjust. I can fully, I can grab that and be like, oh, that's no bueno. Or I can just sort of put a titch in there. And then the other thing is, um, let's see here. Um, I can add some clarity to it and some texture. And then it sort of starts to show up. And then I'm going to just like bump up the blacks a tiny bit so they show up a little more and subtract from the dehaze because it's kind of messing stuff up. Nice. Um, so let's see here. And should I increase or decrease? I'm going to increase the shadows just to skosh and not too much contrast. Anyway. Uh, you'll notice that I can just isolate one area and do stuff with it. And this adjustment brush is really helpful for, um, for those kind of things. So if, if I do that, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom out. I'm going to double click on the adjustment brush. I zoom back out. And now this is like, I still need to tinker with it. It still looks a little funky. But you start to notice that you can like make stuff pop out a little bit more. Um, and that's actually, I forgot, this was, I was going to do that when we did the HSL here. Um, let me pull up. You can see, did it, is it doing what I want? If I pull that up, it sort of makes um, the lipstick that Mate has on pop a little bit more. And then the fuchsia in your dress is a little bit more prevalent. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, we can just add these things a little bit at a time. Um, and then let's say I, you know, like this, this side of her face is a little underexposed. A lot of times um, people use an adjustment brush. I'm going to say new. Um, I'll get rid of this dehaze. It, it keeps the settings from the last thing. So I'm going to like bring up the shadows in this adjustment brush. And then I'm just going to kind of like paint on more exposure. And you can see, if you look at this, this is called Selected Mask Overlay. If I click on that, it shows where I've done stuff. And then so let's say like, ooh, I went overboard. I shouldn't have, there's no reason to paint down here. Mm -hmm. If I hold down Option here, you see that minus sign? Hmm. I can actually subtract some of that mask. Oh. And I can make it smaller if I need to. And that's sort of like we add a mask and then we subtract a little bit. So it does what we want it to do. Nice. Nice. How do you subtract? Sorry, how do you subtract? You hold down Option. Okay. Hold down. Right now it's plus. See that plus right there? If I hold down Option, it becomes a minus, and then it subtracts from the mask. Now I'm going to get rid of that, and I mean it's a little heavy-handed. So, but if I um, let's see here. If I click this little toggle before and after you'll notice though it adds noise um, and that's sort of that's sort of the consequence so if i pull this down i actually think i can remove some of that noise cool okay so anyway 
that's how we sort of we touch up just certain elements of a photo you know if we need to bring often it's people's faces mm -hmm. um one of the things that people use a lot i'll use i'll use andy as an example of this um i'm going to press space bar to drag this um if if you want to kind of remove blemishes or just kind of smooth out somebody's face mm -hmm. you can use this adjustment brush and um go to is texture in here texture you can reduce the texture and you can kind of like smooth out their face smooth out the wrinkles in their face and this is something that like you know they actually have plugins like face smoothery kind of plugins that they use okay um but if you're trying to smooth out somebody's face for a portrait or something then you can decrease the amount of texture texture just is like how much detail there is right so if you okay. remove a little bit of the detail it's softer and you've removed the moved it and then it sort of smooths out the wrinkles on their face <laughs> that is cool yeah. yeah it's really common it's, mm -hmm. it's sort of like I mean, and, and it's up, it's sort of an ethical choice. I try not to do it because <laughs> like if somebody has like a blemish on their face, they probably don't want that in their photo. I get it. Um, but if it's like wrinkles or whatever, it's one of those things like, should I do it or not? <laughs> so anyway. Um, so that's the adjustment brush. The last little bit I'm going to show you is how to how to merge photos. So give me a second here and we're going to pick some photos. We'll get out of this. So we have these three photos at Smith Rock. favor, <laughs> <laughs> um, But if, if you see these, there's, I have three photos here. One, two, three. Um, I can pick what I did was sometimes when you take a photo on your phone, it's called HDR, so high dynamic range. It takes mm -hmm. a bunch of photos in succession and mashes them together. If your camera doesn't do that, you have to use something called bracketing. So you take one photo that's overexposed, one photo that's kind of in the middle, and one photo that's um, one photo that's underexposed. And this is a perfect example of where you would do that. So I have really, really bright, bright sky in the background on that half. But then I have these, it's not super dark, but you have something that needs to be less exposed or more exposed right here in the foreground. So I'm going to take these three. I select all three of them. I hold shift and I'm going to select all of them. And then I have this, if I right click on there, I go to photo merge and there's a bunch of options. I didn't do a panorama. I'm sorry. I didn't. I've done this before, but so like a panorama is you just like take a bunch of pictures, like you just patch together a patchwork quilt. And that's what you'll use if you want to use panorama. Um, but we're going to do an HDR. So I click that. Let it do its thing. It's going to do its preview. Hmm. And I'll just say merge. And this is the final product. Nice. So let me merge. And I think it creates like a brand new photo. Give it a second here. Come on. It's doing it's it's creating it right now. So give me give it a second. Sure. Blah blah blah. Very naughty photo. <laughs> here it is. So here's here. I'm going to show you each of these three. Mm -hmm. So again, we did three exposures. Too dark. Just middle, and then and you can see in each one, I see a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And then I go here. And then it mm -hmm. took all three of those and it smashed them together. And it nice. gave me kind of what I wanted. And then from there, I can even adjust this more. So I can go back, go right into develop, and I can start saying, okay, well, this is pretty good, 
but um, I actually want to increase the blue in this photo or let's see, where's my blue? Blue's hard because it, it can often affect everything because light is blue. Um, but let's see here, um, let's go back to basic. I want to immediately sort of bump up the shadows in this so I can see more of the foreground. But that if you wanted to merge, do a high dynamic range photo, or if you want to do a panorama, you pick on your little film strip or your photo strip down here, you right click and it merges them together into one sort of super photo, whether it be a panorama or whether it be HDR. Cool. That's awesome. And this was, I didn't have a tripod. I just said, I'm, I, and I didn't even have bracketing mode because I still hadn't, I still haven't figured it out totally on the camera. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just going to stand here really still and take three pictures at different uh -huh. exposures. And it still did a good job. Right on. And what I like about it is I can look back there and see, oh, there's Black Butte in the background or whatever that mm -hmm. mountain is. Mm -hmm. Does it matter uh, if you're doing this, if you change like ISO versus aperture for those um, kind of things, Seth? Or? Yes, it, it, the, only in the sense that, um, you know, if you change the aperture, mm -hmm. you have the off chance that you change the focus. Oh, Oh, right. okay. um, but but on something like this, I think it. I don't know if it merges like different fields of focus. Um, what I, the ISO? I, I'm not sure if I did ISO on this. That's the okay. other thing though is if if you have something that's too underexposed, uh, and you or for some reason you have high ISO, you mm -hmm. could potentially introduce noise. Um, but. You know, a lot of these shots, I imagine they're landscape. So, yeah. you know, it's it, I didn't have to work hard to to get what I needed out of this. So, I think you could use either. The only hesitation I would have now, I'm just thinking theoretically, if I change if I change my f stop, if I change my aperture too much, my shutter speed is probably what I would just change. Ah, uh, okay. because it's mm -hmm. a still photo, right? Yeah. Um, that's probably what I would choose to to change because it's not going to impact the noise and it's not going to impact the focus. Right on. Thank you. Okay. I think that's sort of what I wanted to cover. Do you guys have any other questions before we talk about exporting? I have two silly questions. <laughs> silly is fine. Uh, uh, at the top under book, is that literally making like a book of your photographs? Is that what it's for? You don't have to yeah let's take a look um okay. i believe so i honestly i haven't used this module no it's okay I... but it, it it is i think you can create a layout okay right right for different things and i, I i'll take i'll walk this back i have used slideshow the reason being uh -huh. i wanted to create a time lapse oh, um wow. so yes you can do you can actually do books so if Very you want cool. to nice okay. i didn't know that um, but again, you know, you can always do that. Like, let's say this isn't where you want to make your books. You want to mm -hmm. do it in, you know, snap, what it snapfish or whatever it is. Right, right. Like you want to do it on some online service, then, then go print out or get all your photos touched up and then upload them. And then you got, you can do your book there. That's cool. I'll go back here. Next question. The other question is a uh, very iPhone specific. I know that they're, um, like iPhone has the new HEIC, which is like JPEG, I think. But I think, Seth, there's a Apple RAW now or something. Yep. And does Lightroom take care of all this? No problem. Lightroom should be able to handle Apple RAW. Um, I think you can act, you can download, if you want to just dink around on your phone in Lightroom, you can yeah. do Lightroom Creative Cloud and use that and shoot in RAW. Android, you can shoot in RAW now too. Sweet. Um, the only reason in the past why I, why I didn't, and this part of, part of why I still don't do it is like I snap so many photos, <laughs> I just burn through them, you know, and it just eat up right space. So enough said, man. Yeah. Um, Mate, preguntas? I think everything is clear. Let me see. Mm, sí, solo tenía dudas. Um, cuando seleccionabas, o sea, 
el botón que usabas para seleccionar, por ejemplo, cuando quieres aclarar solo la montaña que está atrás. Sí. No, no quieres aclarar el resto, por ejemplo. Eh, está bien. Esto, ok. So, she just wants to know how to correct a certain area of the photo. Yeah. Esto se llama el adjustment brush. Mira por acá. Ok. En, en la esquina hay que, hay que usar esto. Y mira, hace como un círculo. Pero y, tengo que seleccionarlo. Mi pregunta es, ¿tengo que seleccionarlo exacto o si me paso un poco? Uh, como en fudge, se dice fudge factor. Un uh -huh. uh, poquito uh -huh. suave en, en los... Um, Esquinas, sí. Como sí, en... alrededor, sí. Ok. Si sí, mira, ok. Mira el... Un momento. Come on, por favor. Ok, mire el círculo. Uh -huh. Hay dos círculos. Hay uno que está adentro y uno que está como uh, en la esquina. Uh -huh. uh, afuera. Uh -huh. Hay dos. El, lo que está adentro es como va, va a afectar todo puramente. Uh -huh. Pero lo que está afuera es como se, se llama feather, feathering. Oh, ya. Yeah. Lo hace como suave, suave. Ok, entiendo. Ahora sí, era, era mi duda. Ok. Pero tiene que jugar un poquito con eso. Um, y siempre que hay que pensar en aquí están como, lo, aquí está lo que estás usando. Por ejemplo, vamos a, voy a hacer un zoom. Um, ok, hacemos un zoom. Y ya dijiste que quiero, solo quiero hacer algo con eso. Uh -huh. Uso el adjustment brush, brush. Selecciono lo que quiero ocurrir. Uh -huh. Entonces, quiero que sea un poquito más definido, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Entonces, lo que pienso yo es, tengo que subir los negros. Entonces, claro. o, o los asombras. Entonces, uso eso. Selecciono la región que quiero. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Y hacemos um, como un mask. Puedo seleccionar Show Selected Mask Overlay. Mm -hmm. Y hacemos. Seleccionamos la área. Ok. Y pinta, es como pintar. Exacto. Pintamos y lo más rojo, lo más que afecta. Claro. Oh, ya entiendo. Y um, luego muevo. Ok. Y muevo. otra cosa, pero es importante. Aquí está el feather. Es como pluma. Pero uh -huh. como dije, es como suavizar en, los esqui en las esquinas, ¿verdad? Sí. Pero también eso, flow, es como... El, el, um, el paso de cuánto viene, como tú tienes la man, manguera, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Y puedes o oh, ponerlo fuerza. con uh -huh. mucha de fuerza, intensidad. hay mucha agua que pasa uh -huh. o menos fuerza. Y eso es lo que flow, es como hay más efecto cuando el flow está más uh, uh, como sí. más grande. Ok. Ah, perfecto. Ok, pero vamos a usar eso. Uh -huh. Y accidentalmente hice un poquito acá. Puedo tocar Option. Uh -huh. Selecciono las partes que quiero borrar de ah. la máscara. Y aquí en el cielo. Hay un poquito de... Ok. Ok, y ahora... Um, vamos a ver cómo uh, voy, voy a quitar esto de más porque se ve rojo. Uh -huh. Lo quito. No he hecho nada, pero ahora voy, voy a entrar más texture y se ve como más concreto. Claro. Y, y los shadows voy a bajarlos y ahora uh -huh. se ve como más definido. ¿verdad? Claro. Totalmente. Uh -huh. Y hacemos un clic acá. 
Y ahora como... Nice. Vamos a hacer un before y after. Ok. Y puedo quitar, quitar y añadir. Ok, vamos a quitarlo antes y ahora. Sí, bit different, yeah. Sí, pero uh -huh. hay que tener cuidado porque muchas veces si haces demasiado con una parte de una foto, se ve como raro, como extranjero como es, es no no pertenece, no pertenece a... a la fotografía claro sí sí puede verse exagerado sí claro. perfecto gracias de nada <laughs> okay more any more questions how cool that you can bounce in between the two languages Seth like that I'm so impressed I wish I had that ability he's the best he's the best <laughs> Seth he's is the man Spanish perfectly yeah that's <laughs> another Latino That's Gracias. so cool. Yeah, Tengo que practicar más. Awesome. Thank, thank you for talking to both of us. So. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I, I know this is a lot. It's like the fire hose of, of information. Um, you know, my experience with Lightroom was just, you know, importing stuff and starting to dink around. And I had a good mentor that showed me how to do it. Um, and then a lot of like exploration, looking at videos, obviously lynda.com. Mm -hmm. I mean, I watched lynda.com before I did this class. Um, <laughs> cool. So um, I learned a lot of things. Um, so just exploring the interface. Um, let me do one last little bit. I want to show you guys how to import. You can either do it from the library module. If I mm -hmm. press G, you can just, let's say I want to export all this stuff. I've, I've color corrected everything. It's just the way I want it. So I can select all of this, Command A, or I just individually pick the one, this or that. Um, and then um, I'll go to, uh, I can click Export here. And this is sort of, you know, I'm going to export to a hard drive. Um, I can add presets and blah, 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 but I'm, I, I'm pretending I've done all that stuff. I'm going to go to a specific folder. I'm going to go to choose. And then usually I set up a folder that just says exports. You can organize ho however you want. I go exports, create, choose. Everything's going to go there. Done. Um, and then um, what is this? Blah, existing files. Oh. Yeah, if I have existing files, I don't want to overwrite them. So it's going to be like, hey, watch out. Um, and then file naming, I think, is really helpful. So I go to this file naming right here, and I go to rename to. So um, you can do custom name just for each one, but I usually do custom name and sequence. So um, what's going to happen is um, I'm going to say, like, this is like, um, variety pack or you know we did this would be like um, the mate shoot and what it'll do is um, it's going to start at one but I can change that if I need to let's say I exported five photos before I'm like oh crap I have five more I don't want to have all of them have the same name so I'll start it at six um, cool. and then it'll be like mate shoot uno dos tres cuatro all those things Blah, blah. I'm not doing anything with video. File settings is really critical. I'm going to set, you can do a lot of different options. I'm just going to have a JPEG. They're super common. Um, and then I just put the quality to 100. This color space is up to you. I just leave it at this um, because it's sort of the default setting. Um, there's this display P3 is what Mac has. It's just kind of like how we see photos but this this one's pretty common i'm not going to mess with the image sizing not going to sharpen um, metadata you can you can remove location in person um, information or you can add copyright blah 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 you can sort of like keep what you want watermark so if you don't want people using your photos like mate you guys so right here you go to watermark and you can do a simple copyright one or i can do local lens media mm -hmm. i think we might have done a little experience with this before um, and it's so. and it's gonna put it in you can edit your watermarks right here and i think that's why we have local lens 
Um, but you can then it will just put a watermark on everything. But I'm not going to do that. Um, and then post processing is just like, what do I do when it's done? Um, and then I, you can show it in the finder so you know where it goes. And then I just press export and it's going to spit them all out there and it's going to take a second to export them. So it's important to remember Lightroom does not edit the actual photos, your raw photos. They're just sort of clean and pristine where they are. Cool. When you when you edit them in Lightroom here, you're not actually damaging the photos. You're just adding layers of effects, just like in Final Cut. But then when you actually export it, it says, OK, I'm going to plop all this stuff on the new thing, which in this case is a JPEG, and make it look the way they color corrected it and create an entirely new file. And that's sort of whatever goes out, unless it's the original quality, is going to be of lower quality. So don't, what I would recommend is if you export it as a JPEG, don't re import as a JPEG. Go back to the original quality because it's like a copy of a copy, you know? Right on. Yep. That's Thanks. cool. <laughs>